cleaning. Oh, oh cleaning you too. Yeah, I know a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually one of the later ones, barely on time. If, if that, let's see. Oh, you're yeah. fine. <laughs> you're fine. Hello, Dave. Welcome I don't know if you hey. wanted to sit here next How to you your doing, buddy. Bro? Good. Nice good to see, see you back. Just see you. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, last week Is I had Wayne an appointment. Coming? I have a lot of I am here. Um, hello. Yeah. If, if you have options. I had um oh, I had just, I had a low grade fever last night, 99.5, and I've I've had this cough and I I thought uh it would be best if I we stayed home. You couldn't hear what I said? Nope. No, no, no. Anything. But that's not the new. And only a few weeks. That's pretty good. That's me. For a diabetic? Well, my sugar is in control. I, you said that he is had a temperature. Not oh, a lot of good news. I've been getting a lot of good news. He that. told me yesterday Great. that he tested yeah. negative for COVID. So I'm happy for COVID. that for you because, um, like you say, you got to keep an eye on it now. I can't. So I thought it was to. It's a way for me to stay back. Diabetes is nasty. Yeah. We could get the book over and fun with it. Yeah. So, okay, I, I think we ought to be getting started. <laughs> well, that's the important thing. Yeah. Get all the help you can and then do your thing. Hey, hey. hey Duncan, you want to get these people straightened out? <laughs> I I think I think Wayne said let's pray. <laughs> oh is that, is that what you said? From afar. <laughs> How's Tony? He's here. Okay. I just lost him though. <laughs> I have no idea where he is. That's great. Sounds like a I sounds like a plan. My notes. Duncan. Oh, did I get you right today? Dunk. Oh, I mean Duncan. <laughs> we changed names for today. That, oh, you're Wayne today? Call <laughs> him Dwayne. Dwayne. Hey. Cool. D Wayne. Cool. <laughs> and my initials are DW. The see? Oh, okay. that works. Okay, well, this is getting better all the time. So. <laughs> okay, um, Charlene better pray for us before we get too far afield. <laughs> Don't you think so, um, Cheryl? Y'all can hear me. I mean, Charlene. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come together, Lord, in person and over Zoom. And we ask you, oh, Lord, that you would bless this time that we have together, that we would be drawn closer to you, that we would be drawn closer to each other, and that we might um, leave able to spread your light into the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Now, if you guys have the notes, um, I think we figured out that we're on page six, starting in Roman numeral number two, correct? The kingdom? Yeah, Roman numeral two, B. <laughs> Roman numeral number 2B, on page yeah. 6. I believe one of the last things we talked about was seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, was That was under A, uh, A3, because we started singing the song, David and I, right? Uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Remember that, Dave? I'm hard to hear you, and I'm still looking for where we are. Well, I think there, that was a little bit down for you. So what is what is? Oh boy, Dwayne. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to lead if you can't hear me. Hmm. He said last week you guys sang, uh, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God." Do you remember that? Yes. So yeah. that's why he knows where we are. Okay. Oh. I've had a I had a thought about that uh, uh, since then, because um, I was thinking about the fact uh jesus said seek ye first the kingdom of god his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you now normally i think of that in terms of a, the miraculous kind of he, he he provides for our needs but there's even there's something that goes beyond that and that's the part of a kingdom and as part of the kingdom uh we help each other uh we help supply each other's needs so there's also that aspect that it's uh, not necessarily as much it's the miracle of the love that he gives us, uh, uh, providing for one another. What do you think of that? It sounds good. Yeah. However, we confess that there's so much commotion now. We uh, didn't hear only part of what you said. You want to repeat it for us? Oh, boy. <coughs> uh, so uh, what I said was... 
Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, referring to food and clothing. You know, he talks about the lilies of the field and all that. Um, and we have, uh, being part of the kingdom, not only is there the miraculous of God providing for us in many ways, but we provide for each other in the mm. kingdom. That, that's, that was where I, I was thinking, the thoughts that being part of the kingdom means that you're part of a community where we help each other. That sounds, sounds right. Sounds like, yeah. sounds like something the Apostle Paul might say. Mm. All right. Sounds like a miracle to me. Well, it's a miracle either way, isn't it? Yes. Anyway, yes. anytime we, his anytime, love shows through. Anytime God can get us to do things correctly and together. You mean? Yes. Sometimes it's just words of encouragement. And, uh, and, and third, my health has improved. Uh, since good, even as recently as only a couple months ago, right? Uh, it's been pretty tough take for a while, uh -huh. but it's better, much better. Okay, so, uh, somebody want to could people start looking up these uh verses? Uh, maybe somebody could take Psalms, the Psalms verses, and somebody could take Daniel, um, uh, and then Luke, and all these. Do you, if you are are you seeing these? Do you have the piece of paper in front of you? We're on uh, page six, and we're oh, we're we're talking about the kingdom as it relates to Jesus, which yes. is we've got the whole notes. It's page six. So it would probably be best if everybody did the reading. From there, instead of here, because uh, we're not hearing, you're not hearing me too well. If I was a wise guy, I'd say what? Yeah. But since you're so wise, you're going to assign all these readings to people right there. Okay, that sounds like a great plan. Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. Psalm 103, verse 19. Say that again, please. Psalm 103, 103, mm -hmm. verse 19. That's what we're going to start with. Because what we're doing is we're talking about the kingdom as it relates to Jesus. In one sense, the kingdom or reign of God has always existed. God ruled in the affairs of men in the ages of the past. And we're going to look at a couple of, uh, a few Old Testament verses. So does someone have Psalm 103, verse 19? I do. And then if someone wants to look up Psalm 145. Okay. I can't even find my, my papers. That paper. Did you, did you, you don't have an extra. No, I, I printed this off at home today, at home. hoping that I got the right thing. So what was the last? What was the last passage we did last week? Do you remember? Because then I can look at my Bible. Uh, I have so many papers here. It's we were in Matthew six. Matthew. Uh, oh, Matthew six thirty three. Right. So, yeah, I saw that. Uh, I have my notes here someplace if I can, if I can find them. So, mean meantime, carry on, and I'll keep looking. Who's got Psalm one forty five? I do. And you were you're reading verse one and verse thirteen. Okay. When we get to it, yep. uh, Daniel. Anybody want to look up Daniel chapter 4? Sure, I will. If you tell me what verse 4 what? Yep, chapter 4. Yeah. Verses, there, there's a few of them, so. Okay. Verses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to be a listener today. <laughs> Can't find my notes. Got too many Bible studies and too many notes. Okay. Turn to Jan Daniel chapter two, please. Daniel chapter two. Okay. So you're in Daniel chapter four. One to three. One to three, verse thirty-two. 
and 34 and 35. Okay. One, two, three. Nebuchadnezzar the king. Wait a minute. We, wait a minute. we have Psalm 103 first. Oh. I'm, I'm, I've got 103, verse 19. Yes, but wait a second. Let's get some more people involved so we don't have to do it later, a little bit later. Okay. Have you got one yet? What? Are you looking up a verse right now? I'm in Psalms. Uh, well, we don't need anybody in Psalms. Okay. But uh, could you find Luke chapter 1? Mm hmm. And read uh, when, when it's your turn, 31 through 33. Chapter 1, yep. 31. To 33. Right. Yeah, I got Daniel, Daniel 2. What verse? Uh, 44. 44. Mm -hmm. And that'll be, that'll take us through the first two. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're looking at God's rule in the affairs of men in ages past Psalm 103. Verse 19? Yes, please. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. <laughs> hey. Okay, so that goes under the idea that it's been around for an awful long time, and he is the ruler, he's the king, and not only in heaven, but everywhere. Right? Isn't that what rules over yes. all? Okay. Yeah. In the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew always refers to the kingdom of, instead of the kingdom of God, he calls it the kingdom of heaven, which is basically the same thing. But that's where God, that's where his rule comes from. Okay, Psalm 145? Yeah. Verse 1 and 13, right? Thank you. <laughs> I will praise you, my God and King, and bless your name forever. And ever. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule generation after generation. The Lord is faithful in all he says, he is gracious in all he does. That's in the New Living Translation, those two lines are added. I like your like translation. <laughs> So again, the idea of God being the king, and he's a king over everything. I think that's what that verse said. Also, they, is, was there anything else that we should be thinking about, Wayne, here? I, I think that that's basically it. We're just seeing that, yeah, it's kingdoms forever and has always been, yeah. Okay. Daniel, please. And what we're what we're listening for is something to do with Nebuchadnezzar learning a similar lesson that we've been talking about. And um, Christina, we're we reading from Daniel four. Nebuchadnezzar's second dream. Nebuchadnezzar the king, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. How great are his signs and how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Wasn't that a turnaround for Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, do you remember what, what uh, happened with Nebuchadnezzar? Where he <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. he turned out eating grass and yeah, yeah. I'll tell you that's a punishment isn't it mm -hmm. when you, yeah. that, right and he went from how great am I to how great is he yeah mm -hmm. wow yeah but he was restored yeah that's the best part of Bob Judas, Judas himself could have been restored could have but he went to the other way mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you read all of those verses? No, I'll get. I'll do okay. now if you like. Uh, verse thirty-two, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever He chooses. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever. 
For his dominion is an everlasting kingdom, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? Oh, <laughs> Him, what have you done? <laughs> kind of reminds me of how the Lord answered Job when Job was, you know, complaining, and the Lord said, yeah. "And who are you?" You know. Yeah, boy, that's Did harsh. That's this? harsh for what this man gave to God, and then he's going through and he asks a question, and God almost reprimands him. Right. <laughs> well, putting things in perspective, <laughs> and look how beautifully he responded, though. Right. You know, and that's right. the key. How we how we respond, yeah. you know, because he he's teaching all of us, isn't he? All of us, and sometimes it's rather hard. Sometimes it's a, how can you do that to me? You love me. Look what I did for you. Well, I'm molding you. I'm yeah, maturing. Yeah. You. yeah, yeah. I like to read the Bible in the sky because in Job there are several things that are mentioned that I like to view. Uh, I mean, Arcturus, which is a star that you can find at the end of the tail of the Big Dipper in an arc, points to Arcturus, huh. and then Orion, of course, is mentioned. And the Pleiades, which is a star cluster. All of those are mentioned. Were you there when I put all these things into place? How about that? A little astronomy lesson. I like I like I like Job for that. Yeah. That's cool how, how he uses the uses universe. the universe, yeah. like, or whatever you want to call it. The heavens the declare the, the glory of God. The heavens, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that some what? Eight or nine or nine, eighteen or the heavens declare the glory of God. I, there's a there's several. Th I don't know. Did you have any comments that you wanted to make, uh, Wayne? Before I jump in here. Um. No, you can go ahead. Uh, well, actually, I had one. Okay. Uh, my Bible said his reason returned to him. I can't remember what uh, what uh, Chris has, um, said, but it but it wasn't his reason. And I think of the fact that. Um, don't we all, when we look, we lift our eyes to the Lord, our reason returns to us on a daily, moment by moment basis. Because if we're not lifting our eyes to the Lord and looking for His guidance, etc., are we making reasonable decisions? I'd say no. Um, you know what we want uh, what Jesus wants is us to seek his kingdom and um, and that means you know following him he also rules in the, in the things of the world and he rules in other ways but that's not the way we want to be ruled we don't want to be ruled because he forces it we want to be ruled because we voluntarily submit that <clears throat> One verse that um, Christine didn't read was because she wasn't asked to was verse four. And it says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. Mm. And then he has a dream. Then Daniel tells him, you're in for it because God loves you. Therefore, you're going to be in for it. A whole bunch of rotten things happen to him. And then, as you guys were just talking about, his reason comes back or his understanding comes back, and he looks up into the heavens. Wow. You know, uh, restoration. Uh, but how many of us kind of, oh, life is nice, everything's going okay. Look at what I've done. You know, look at my look at my little kingdom. Yeah. You know, uh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and thank God when he knocks us down it's as far as he needs to. Right. You know, humbles humbles right. Humbles right. Humbles right. Right. He's gonna be humble. Right. Well, we need it sometimes. Oh, we have too much self confidence. Like Dave was saying, too, when you focus on the universe and all the splendor that God had done it, yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Us in perspective, and you know, like we're not the center of the universe at all. No, no, no. Not, at all. not like the universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Stationary and everything went around the earth. Yeah. Huh? yeah. The second second thought that kind of came to my mind was the contrast between Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, mm. and King Herod. Mm. Remember what King Herod, when he heard that there might be a king of the Jews, yeah. he was really upset. Curious. When King Nebuchadnezzar realized that the king of kings, the king of the universe, wanted to speak to him or show himself to him, mm-hmm. the end result was very different. Very different. Okay. I mean, we don't know if Herod repented. Ever, yeah. But we do know what he caused to happen for all the boys under age two. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So. He was, he, he was near death anyway, Herod was, wasn't he? Well, why was he so concerned about... Maintaining his kingdom, so to speak. His days were very short and numbered. I'm not. A, I'm not aware of what specifically you're talking about. But if you're mm-hmm. accurate that he was sick, nigh to death, I suppose. Well, first of all, pride gets in the way. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. second mm-hmm. of all, normally it gets passed on to your your children, and yeah. to think that there was a King possibly that was going to oh, conquer, because yeah. they totally got misunderstood mm-hmm. King Jesus. The mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and and in fact, his his son did rule after him. His son did what? Rule after his him. His son did rule after him, inherit mm-hmm. his son. Yeah. And, and I think there's a third thing that we see from what happened to Nebuchadnezzar which brought him to the point of being able to look up into the heavens and be really thankful for the king of kings, um, is that, you know, sometimes God has to really shake us. Just think of what he went through. God really has to shake us, to shake out those things that are shakable, the scripture says, to establish those things in our lives that aren't shake. Well, thank God that God disciplines Absolutely. You know, uh, oh, absolutely. That punishment sometimes. Yeah. 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 Ready to go to the next section? Okay. Next section. In a special way, God would exercise his rule in the affairs of men as foretold by Daniel in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people like that. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. (laughs) Wow. Wow, that tells it like it is, doesn't it? Dissect that verse a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, there's only one kingdom that 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 could be talking about, and that's that's with King Jesus. (laughs) And it shall not be left to other people. I love that part. Yeah. And it's, right. It, what? Right. I mean, it, oh. it, not not because you know in other kingdoms that's left to the the sons or other kingdoms take over. This one's forever with only one ruler. One ruler. That's. I think it's interesting. You are reading how all of the nations are going to be overruled. You know, all of the kings are going to be. Israel had the opportunity to have God be their king, and they forfeited that. So, in a sense, they're thrown into that same. All the kings, all the kingdoms are going to be overthrown and come under one rule. They could have gone directly to that if they just. Mm-hmm. God he didn't want to be like everybody else, you know. My Bible says here, God's kingdom will never be destroyed. If you are upset by threats of war and the prosperity of evil leaders, remember that God, not world leaders, decides the outcome of history. Under <laughs> God's protection, God's kingdom is indestructible. <laughs> Those who believe in God are members of his kingdom and are secure in him forever. Wow. Who's taking in this day? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Pardon me? What? It's good to hear in this day and age with all the yes, the way the world's going today. Any other thoughts? So I think we're in what Luke chapter one, and it says, "So for in a special in a special way, God would exercise His rules in the affairs of men, as proclaimed by Gabriel concerning Jesus." Luke one. Mm -hmm. 31 through 33 you will be with child and give birth to a Jesus to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the most high the father the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David mm -hmm. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Amen. Continuously emphasizing that. Love it. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Because we got some more scriptures that we need to assign. <laughs> Carol, Psalm 2, 1 through 12. Can you look up a psalm? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, Psalm 110. 110. Please. Okay. Has everybody read so far? <laughs> you got to change your eyes? Yeah. Uh, okay, one, two. Okay, one through 12. But let, let's uh, sign a couple more here. Uh, anybody want to read some verses in Luke chapter 10? Sure. Okay, one. Oh, when you find it, then I'll tell you. Yeah. Someone else? Um, Matthew, Matthew 12. Got it. And while you're in Matthew, can you do Matthew 28 as well? Sure. When it's time? Yeah. Uh, Ephesians. Tony, would you like to read it? One to one. Uh, 22, 20 to 22. Right. And uh, let's see. Have you got some right now? Mm -hmm. Do you have some to read? Or did I give you some to read? No. Okay. Who's got Luke 10? Mm. Okay. Oh, I got Luke 10. No, uh, he's, got, he's going to do Luke 10 for us. Uh, you can look uh, Luke 20. Uh, Luke 11, verse 20. Okay. Okay. And a Revelation 2 and 3. There's some verses. You want to look up Revelation? Sure. And I'll look up 1 Peter 3. Okay. So... Let's see what we. Uh, Psalm two. Who's got Psalm two? I do. Okay, and so this is what we're thinking about here. This God would do in the person of the kingdom of God relates to G, to Jesus. This God would do in the person of Jesus Christ, as foretold by David. Okay, Psalm two, first twelve verses. Mm. Why do the nations protest and people <clears throat> in vain? Kings on earth rise up and princes fought together against the Lord and his anointed. Let us break their shackles and cast off their chains. The one enthroned in heaven laughs and the Lord just derides them, then speaks to them in anger, terrifies them in wrath. I myself have instilled my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, 
today I am your father. Only ask it of me, and I will make your inheritance, the nations, your possessions, the ends of the earth. With iron rod, you shall shepherd them. Like a clay pot, you will shatter them. And now, kings give heed. Take warning, rulers on earth. Serve the Lord with fear, with trembling bow, bow down, with trembling bow down in homage. Let God be angry and perish from the way, in the sudden blaze of anger. Happy are all who take refuge in God. Okay. So, the kingdom as it relates to Jesus, God would do this in the person of Jesus Christ. How does those verses that we just heard um, relate to that? I believe uh, Psalm 2 was um, was quoted, I believe, in the New Testament somewhere, that you you are my son, today I've begotten you. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's definitely a messianic psalm. Carol just mentioned that it was when Jesus went and got baptized by John the Baptist when he came up. Uh, there was a voice from heaven. Mm. She said that that was said then. Ah, yes. Honestly. Any anything else? Wow. What 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 comes to my mind from verse eight? Um, ask me, and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance. Is um the temptation that the that um the devil did with Jesus when he was in the wilderness was mm -hmm. that not one of the things that the um devil tried to tempt him with? All that he could see, and yet, wasn't that it? Yeah, yeah. And, right. and yet, he it, could, his was already beyond all that he could see. It, it was already his, and, and yeah. the devil wanted to give it to him. <laughs> yeah. Any other thoughts from Psalm 2? Before we go on to Psalm 110. Uh, has anybody noticed in verse nine the um we just read um in Daniel about uh, well maybe we didn't read it right before what we read it talked about the various nations um the the ruling stuff and it talked about the foot and some of it was made of iron and some of it was made of Earthenware. Anybody? Um... That was part of the dream. Yeah. 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 That's definitely not something we read today, but yeah. Um, and I wondered how, if there was any correlation between that and um, and this psalm, uh, the fact that he used this, the iron and the earthenware and. Um, with Jesus that um, uh, shatters the other nations. Well, like if that. you recall the, the dream, there was a, a small, forget what it, what it described. Something came and shattered that all the nations, which is what the, the statue represented. Tell me to read that again. Was that in um, chapter 2, verse 44? I don't think so. Uh, 244. Yeah, it was. Um, so it was in that section between 40 and 43. Um, and um, in 43, it says, and in that you saw the iron mixed with common clay. They will combine with one another in the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, even as iron does not combine with pottery. Um, and I think it, in verse 9 in Psalm 2, the Lord's going to use a rod of iron 
yeah. to deal with the the vessels of clay. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. It doesn't directly relate. No, it doesn't. All right. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Okay. You may go on. I got one, Psalm 10. Yep, read the verses 1, 2, and 3, please. Okay. The Lord said to my Lord, be seated at my right hand till I put all those who are against you under your feet. Hmm. The Lord will send out the rod of your strength from Zion. Be king over your haters. Your people will give themselves gladly in the day of your power. Like the dew of the morning on the holy mountains is the army of your young men. Okay, we're talking about the kingdom that's going to be established through Jesus. God does it through the person of Jesus. And we're looking at David foretelling it in the Psalms. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Now, my verse three says, Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. Hmm. So, uh, or another ver version that says, we'll serve you willingly. As opposed to, which is different than his ruling with the rod. He shouldn't need to rule us with the rod, although there are times when he, he disciplines us. It's a little different than... Am I right? Uh, the ruling the nations is a uh, with the rod is a bit different than us willingly submitting to him. Oh, I think it's <laughs> you're right. Yeah. You mean volunteering in verse three? Yeah. And take a look at what the, the second part. Look, here's a it would seem the characteristic of those who volunteer, they do it in the beauty of holiness. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they do it from the womb of the morning, it says in the New King James. Womb of the morning. Interesting. <laughs> kind of neat imagery here. Yeah. Of God's people. Yeah. Where are you reading, uh, Duncan? Psalm 110. <clears throat> Psalm 110. Okay. Verse 3. Psalm 10. I can't buy Luke. Oh, I was in Luke. Psalm <laughs> um, 110. Okay. Yeah. I, I just noticed uh, the first the first four after that which is isn't mentioned in this uh, is a, a verse that was used in Hebrews the Lord has sworn and he will not relent you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek mm -hmm. we know from Hebrews that that's referring to Jesus as as our high priest curious Okay, so are we ready to go to Luke 10? Yeah. All right. <laughs> you must have Luke, you you must have Luke 10. 
<laughs> so you can read verse 1, 8 through 11, correct? Okay. And if you want to, you can just read 1 through 11. If it's just, I always say cutting things out. Yeah, let, let me read what the notes say about this verse so we have something to attach it to. Thank you. Okay, we're talking about God would do this through the person of Jesus. Manifestations of this rule were evident even during his early ministry. So, David, you're on. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them on ahead in care to all the towns and villages he planned to visit. If a town welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you and heal the sick. As you heal them, say, the kingdom of God is near you now. But if, a, but if a town refuses to welcome you, go out into its streets and say, we wipe the dust of your, own, of your town from our feet. As a public announcement of your doom. Oh. And don't forget the kingdom of God is near. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Consequence for rejection. <laughs> is that as far as I'm going? Oh, one, wait, one through 11, right? You read one through 11? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I skipped to eight. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Yep. <laughs> So I, I always uh, uh, it amazes me uh, that mm -hmm. Jesus was able to just send out disciples to do what he was doing. Um, you know that transfer of power was uh, is kind of amazing, and yet we have that power, same power available to us. <laughs> What I picked up in those verses is um, what he told them to say. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Um, it, it's in contrast to believing that um, the kingdom of God is Jesus-centric. I mean, it is Jesus-centric, but it's beyond that. The kingdom of God is where wherever he rules. Yes. And wherever his power is being manifest. His love is being manifest. When he is being manifest. <clears throat> yes. But he does not personally have to be present. Hmm. I mean, because there are times when he was there and they made that kind of a comment yeah. that we've read. Right. These now are his disciples making that comment when he is not physically present. True. Which means, which follows through that now we should be able to make that comment. Yeah. When we are where we are, and we are obeying him, the kingdom of God should be, we could be able to say that the kingdom of God has come near. Hmm. There's a passage of scripture where Jesus says, uh, the kingdom of God is among you, and uh, there, there's some translations that says within you, and it, it's not that that doesn't make sense since he was talking to the Pharisees at the time. I think we talked mm -hmm. about that last week, but um, so here again, it says it has come near you. It doesn't mean that you have the kingdom of God with you uh, in you uh, unless you also join and, and become. His followers. Hmm. <clears throat> I, 
I think it's interesting that earlier, between you know, between the verses that David read, <clears throat> there's kind of a description, the, the part that people who are already in the kingdom have are called to play in order to get more people into the kingdom when Jesus said there's a harvest out there to be had and we need laborers. Laborers are few. Huh? So we can partake in the gathering of more people into the kingdom if we're laboring for the Lord. I, I think that's kind of neat. Yeah. The king calls us to, be his to work with him. Yeah. To get more yeah, call by, right. by our lives and how we live them, besides our words, how we're living our lives is much more important than the words we say. Mm -hmm. But in combination, then then it's attractive, right? It's mm -hmm. attractive, you know. Mm -hmm. And like you say, Duncan, a calling for sure. The great the great commission, obviously. You know, so yeah, go ye into all. The word harvest specifically applies to me. My last name, H O S T, with an umlaut over the O, is pronounced this. And in Danish, <laughs> it means okay. harvest. Uh -huh. oh. it's roughly translated into oh. harvest. How about that? Something. So my first name, David, is beloved. beloved. And my last name, this is harvest. So I'm beloved harvest. But I don't believe I'm the cream of the crop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little humility there someplace. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Duncan means brown warrior. <laughs> What's that first word? Brown. Brown. Warrior. Okay. I'm named, named after my great grandfather, who's Scottish. Scottish? <laughs> I think. Campbell. Duncan Campbell. Duncan Campbell. Anyway, <laughs> my great grandfather was I, Lourdes Gerhard Bisbee. That's awesome. my great grandfather. Okay, so let's see. What do we have next? Uh, Luke 11? 20? Did, that, did we ask anybody to read Luke 11 20? Did we not? I'll read it. Okay. But if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Hmm. Well, in the context, that means that was because they they were calling, they were saying he was casting out by Satan himself, which is <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, yeah. Certainly one of one of the things that demonstrated that Jesus was who he said he was was that he had power over over the demonic world. He had power over the 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 flesh uh, 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 with healing, and he had power over nature. Hmm. Yep. Certainly the day and age we live in is really dark. Very dark. I mean, I mean and I guess part of the sadness is mm -hmm. that there's too many people that don't understand that there's a real kingdom of darkness that's ruling the hearts of very many. Mm -hmm. But we have the king of kings who's more powerful than that kingdom. <laughs> Greater is he who that is in First John four four. Me, right. Then that little sweet, so, small. I like that. Capital H, small H. I mean, you know, know, folks, I quote that often in my living room. That'll do. Yeah. And when he's attacking, I go to the I go to the floor and I do this. <laughs> Greater is he that is in me. And I'm looking uh, at Linda, right? <laughs> he that is in the world. And I all we have to refrain from saying. Which he is in your life, uh, and I would not say that. I only, I only would say I can testify to which he is in me when I get battles over that force in my living. Yeah, so that's though, a powerful verse. Even though we're in the great 
minority being believers, <laughs> we have the greater power. Of course. And our side wins in the end. Our side, right. we are. I, I like that. Our, our, our side wins in the end. I we love the, it. We know the result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those of us who are able to listen to that heads up that's given all over. My, my problem, though, is how, especially here in America, yeah. when we live, you know, we have our churches, we have our friends around us that love the Lord. You know, we're not in the middle of the the battles necessarily. Perhaps. How come we really don't? How, how come we fear sometimes? Uh, fear death. I mean, or yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of us. I mean, it, we 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 believe that we die absent from the body, present with the Lord. But I think if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of us say, I don't know, I'm kind of nervous about dying. Maybe it's ner the how we die that we have ner nervous. Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just think we live a lot more in fear than what we should be able to yeah. when we realize that we have the King of Kings. Yes. I want to share with you a testimony that I just heard that kind of relates to this. Um, a couple of Sundays ago, a, a woman came up to me and said, Gee, there is a woman that goes to this church, but she was taken to the hospital only a few days before. And um, she had abdominal pains. And when she was taken to the hospital, they withdrew four or five liters of fluid in her abdomen. And then they found out that she had cancer in, in, the, in her abdomen. And when this sick woman was speaking to the woman that came to me with the story, she said, you know, it, it, if Jesus heals me, wonderful. But, you know, if he doesn't, he says, she says, I'm comfortable with that. I'm OK with that. Yeah. She Jeez. says, in the meantime, I want to be a testimony for the Lord. There you go. Whether I live, praise the Lord, whether I die, praise the Lord. That's all that I want. And she said, she said, a doctor came into my room and I asked the doctor can we pray together? And the doctor's response was, well, you know, I'm not really one for prayer. She says, don't worry about it. I'll do the praying. And I guess she grabbed the hand of the doctor, oh. if I if I remember that part correctly, and she prayed. Oh. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> instead of fearing death, how about let's using it as a maybe a means? Because guess what? Our God has more power over our death. Sure. To to die is just to be released. Yeah. yeah. You know, but at any rate, I, what I, I what does Paul say? Fear the unknown. Yes, we you do. know, because nobody's you know really told us what it's like, and you know, it's we tend right. to fear Nobody something that we don't sure. really comprehend. I heard another anecdote or a story about that. I, don't, I can't honestly say it's true. I don't know, but it certainly illustrates that might be helpful for us. There was this doctor that had a patient who was terminally ill, and he was afraid to die. Mm. And um, so he said, doctor, doctor, you know, how do I deal with this fear? When about the same time, it, this must have been in the guy's home, the doctor's house, home, I guess. I can only think that. Yeah. But I'll, he heard us, they both heard scratching at the door. And um, when the doctor went and opened up the door, it was the doctor's dog that came in. He was all excited and all excited. He said, you know, death is like that. My dog didn't know what was going on inside this room. What the dog knew was that his master was on, inside there. Yeah. That's why he wanted to be in there and was all excited. It wasn't <laughs> the fear of, the, he didn't have a clue. No. But what he did know is that his master was in yeah. there. And I, and you know, I guess what I'm saying is when we begin to think like that, the fear of the unknown, what we do know is Jesus is there. Jesus loves us. And uh, that. how about let's be childlike. Jesus loves me this I am for the Bible. So, Carol, that, there, when you said unknown, I, I really believe you weren't saying that with not really knowing the unknown. We obviously know the unknown. Uh, 
for those of us who believe in him. We're going to be with him. Right. We're doing a study now called, I think I mentioned with you, the, what happens to you the minute after you die? Well, I was thinking of a phrase that Paul, Paul said as far as the fear, the fear. What did he say? I can't reference it. For me uh, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Is that what he says? To die is gain. Does that remove the fear if we believe that and we have that in our heart? Right. And I'm, and, and I'm just saying when we have that, I'll speak for myself. Isn't fear sort of like removed? When yes. we're going to be in his bosom, yep. why are, why would we be afraid of that? We talked about fear last night in Bible study because we're doing this series, like I just said. And you know what bothered me? The leader asked the question, and there was silence. Man, I had some things to offer, and I basically didn't because I didn't want to be the one necessarily to initiate that. Yeah. It almost felt like the people in that room were actually struggling with fear. And, and what do they say about fear? The moment you can overcome the fear of death you don't have to be afraid of anything right. else yeah. but that's just a secular statement the yeah. spiritual one is death is a gift that's a gift that's what we're here that's for. a gift mm -hmm. yeah, we're here to go to him there you go mm -hmm. so those thoughts were you know what we're talking about now so interconnected and we have different bible studies you all most of you do and it's so cool how many times they interconnect with each other especially yeah. right now the thoughts i'm getting you. and the fear factor doesn't the devil really capitalize on our human fear? Of course he does. Of course he does. Yeah. Yeah. Causes to, 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 to make irrational decisions sometimes. Causes a sleepless nights, things mm -hmm. like that. But I don't have any trouble sleeping anymore. I don't even need my sleep at night. I don't even need my uh, night med most of the time. I take it, but <laughs> pretty much past that point of inability to fall asleep. <laughs> I think that's a gift. It is 1028, believe it or not. Um, I'd like to go through all the section B, which I thought we'd be going on to the next section after that. But um, we can do that next week. Uh, okay, so where did we just leave one, off? one thing to look we 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 left off at uh, Luke eleven twenty. Matthew twelve twenty eight is really a repeat of Luke eleven twenty. Yes, yes. So I, I'm not sure that was necessary. So um, we should just start with C then, right? Three C. Yeah, three C. We can look forward to Ephesians telling us that we are seated with Him in the heavenly places. Anyway, okay. So prayers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.